This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson and I interview famous people, but I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. My guest today is Peter Herman. Peter is currently starring on the television series Younger. He plays Charles. It's a fun show about a woman who pretended to be 20-something when really she was 40-something to get a nice job in publishing. But it is so much beyond that. It's a fun show. Check it out. It just kicked off a new season on TV Land. You may also recognize Peter from Blue Bloods and Law and & Order, where, fun fact, he met his wife, Mariska Hargitay. You know, Olivia Benson, the star of Law & Order SVU. Anyway, this episode originally aired last August, but I'm re-releasing it today in honor of the new season. It's a fan favorite, and I hope you enjoy it. Definitely check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash reallyfamous, for an exclusive video clip with Peter. Spoiler, it will make you laugh. Head on over to youtube.com slash reallyfamous. I'd like to thank the Ryu Plaza New York Times Square for sponsoring this episode. It's where Peter and I met and had this very stellar conversation. I'm going to have to surrender my actor card when I say I've never seen The Godfather 2. <gasps> that bad? That's so bad. I can't. What? I feel like I'm not allowed to be a person on the planet. Not I think I have to go remedy that tonight. So. Tonight, please. Yeah, I exactly. Do. But wait a minute. So, um, but you have seen The Godfather? I say, oh my God, yes. Yes. And if I hadn't, I wouldn't admit to not having seen it. Right. So, so The Godfather Part 2 is like just as good as, if not. If not better, right. It's if the, not better. Famously, the sequel that surpassed the original. Right. And it won the Oscar for Best Picture. I think it's the only, isn't it the only sequel that's ever won an Oscar? You now know much more about it than I do. It so may not, congratulations. It may not be true, but it's a fantastic fact. That is a fantastic fact. I hope it is true because the other movies have not won, won Oscars that should have, such as Goodfellas, since we're on that. Since we're on, since we're on that, uh, since yeah. we're on that topic. And the, the, and we just saw, now to switch genres and perhaps caliber of film, uh, we just saw Incredibles 2. Same! I and saw it a couple weeks ago. Loved it! Did you hate it? Wow. I thought it was so funny. It was going so well between us. Oh no. Shoot! Now I have to end the interview. <laughs> oh, darn. It was you so nice. It? nice to me. Um, I, well, I don't, I think, I, I'm always reluctant to say that uh, you know, I, I didn't like it at all. I hated the movie because I think that that at whatever level, I think at the heart of any movie or any artistic endeavor, at whatever budget, it's just people hoping that it'll be good. So I, uh, especially when I'm in this industry, to say ah, I didn't like your movie, um, I, I always hesitate. But I didn't. I I, I just yeah. I didn't care for it. Um, and I think that I think it didn't quite know what it was about. I think there was, is it, is it about the evil of screens? Is it about role reversals? Is it about, uh, and I think that it just seemed, uh, it seemed confused. And there were a lot of things that they laid track for in the beginning of the movie that didn't pan out, that didn't pay off. Like Elastigirl, right? Who uh, in the beginning she gets, pretty jazzed about being the one, right? About being chosen to be the hero. Wait, I have to, I have to jump in for a second. I did not see The Incredibles like, 1. This is why, so I don't know, is the last Oh, come on. on. Sorry. I went, so the second one, because I'm interrupting and we're going right back to you in a second, but I went only because it was my son's birthday and he wanted to take a bunch of friends to see it. So, I, I, so, so, so okay, so I will, I will say, that not having seen the original Incredibles is on par with not having oh, seen great. Godfather okay. 2. All right. So All right. we're enough. even, we can now continue. Okay. We are back you to have tra we transgressed in the world of film. I have transgressed, you've transgressed. And um, <laughs> so I'll do Godfather 2, you'll do the original Incredibles. Really treat, yeah. I mean, I, now that you've seen the second one, um, but it, it is, it, 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 they, it, it, light, lightning struck with in, with the original Incredibles. There was some. There was just something so fantastic about the movie that that uh, in the same way that the, with the original Guardians of the Galaxy, tonally 
That movie was impeccable and they tried to hit that tone again the second time and they didn't quite do it. And in this case, I thought they tried to hit the same tone for The Incredibles 2. They tried to hit that they tried to make lightning strike again and put all the same stuff in the soup, but the soup didn't quite turn out the same. So you probably need a different recipe yeah. rather than trying to repeat the first. Yes. Um, but a recipe is just as good and just as original. But it is so fiendishly difficult. Yeah, I guess. It's fiendishly difficult to make a great original. It's fiendishly difficult to make a great sequel. So, so you're a good movie analyzer. I like that. I, whether uh, good... Or uh, interested. Uh, interested. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, that very, very much so. Um, and I, it's funny when Mariska and I go see movies together. She'll, she'll talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get mad. It's like this didn't pan out. They set this thing up in the beginning, and yeah, yeah. Right, about right. the way that the story was organized. Interesting. And do you always agree on the movie or not? Because you're looking at different parts. We we rarely don't. Uh, yeah, I can't. There has, there. <laughs> I don't know if there's ever been a movie where, where we have walked out and she said, I loved it. And then, and, and I've said, you know, couldn't stand it. Or yeah, there hasn't, there hasn't been that. Uh, there, have, there have been friendships that have, that have teetered on the edge of viability because of movies that friends have liked and that we- Really? So yeah, yeah, so, like so, so, so we get super, Judgmental. But you're on the same team. Yeah, we're point. on we're on the same team. But oh, it's so bad when someone says like, oh, there was one these friends of ours, and they there was the movie Lars and the Real Girl, um, about a about a about a man who, and this was this was a while back, but it, it, about a man who I think is so lonely that he buys a like uh, it, it's a step up from like a blow up sex doll, but so you can you can get. A slightly more lifelike person, and it's about his relationship with this pseudo gal. Okay. Um, and we left, and then friends of ours went to see it, and they just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And then so we had to go into chambers, Mariska and I, and talk about whether it's possible to still. Right. Yeah, it's like, who are these people? Who are you exactly? Who are you? And if we if we uh, disagree that strongly about something uh, as fundamental to life as whether or not Lars and the Real Girl is a good movie, um, then we have, then how, yeah, how can yeah. we how can we be friends? But seriously, walk out. Also, that really yeah, says a lot. But which, which I have to say that we, I think, just weren't in the right frame of mind. But I think that there are films that that are let's say tonally quirky right that are because the creator is genu genuinely has a unique take on the world that gets translated onto the page and then you're looking at something original then there are those who try to strike a quirky tone and i think when that starts to show i back away because i feel like it is uh it's I, I feel like I'm being manipulated. Uh-huh. So, I hate being manipulated. I hate, sorry, I don't like it. Yeah. I w I'm with that. Okay, so I'm thinking the first person who comes to mind now when you're talking about that is Wes Anderson. So which category? Do you know Wes Anderson's movie, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. of this? Okay, so which yeah. would you put him in then? Um, I, I think a highly polished, refined, individual view of the world. Absolutely. Okay, so absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So he no gets question. the thumbs up for Yeah, me. yeah, no question. Okay, so like Moonrise Kingdom, like what are some, I love Moonrise Kingdom, personally. Did Didn't like see it, one? have to confess, okay, no. If you like that kind of movie, please watch go, that. Go for, yes. Um, it's, on, it's not, go see it now, it's not current, it's probably 10 years okay. ago, okay. eight, I don't know, I'm just gonna guess. Uh, with Ed Norton. Um, who is sensational. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, um, Oh God! The the movie, the hotel, the the yeah, the, 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 um, the wait, there are a couple of the hotel with the, the big pink, exactly a big, right, right, big right. pink hotel with um, the with the name? concierges who all which is right like that with that, uh, right with F. Murray Liam, Abraham F Murray Abraham and Liam Neeson and um it was Liam Neeson right no it yeah. wasn't it uh, was the, um, um it Ray Fiennes yes Ray Fiennes sorry my God and uh, what is that it's called hotel something I feel like um the Grand Budapest Hotel excellent. Yeah, okay, and then another, I love the Royal Tenenbaums. Did you Didn't see that it. one? That no. was one of his older ones, yeah, I yeah. think. Saw it a long time ago. Not for everyone, at all. Um, and now, you can't 
keep asking me about Wes Anderson movies because I get super self-conscious about stuff that I haven't seen. Okay, so we're moving on. <laughs> what are some movies that you love, like all-time favorites? Um, I think my favorite movie um, is uh, is Chariots of Fire from way, way back in the day. I think it is possibly the perfect movie. I, I actually, I think the actual perfect movie is a movie called The Lives of Others. Um, I feel like I know the movie, but I just um, have to like. Um, which is about uh, uh, life and... Uh, it, which is about uh, it plays in uh, East Germany during the time of the uh, before the wall came down um, and uh, about a relationship and it is uh, impeccable uh, I thought you know in going back to the Incredibles just <laughs> structural <laughs> yeah, yeah. entertainment value I don't know how many times now I've seen that movie I think it's off the charts um, I Boy, what, look, it's incredible that I, I think of um, when you're asked to list movies that I love. Yeah, it's tough, um, and then later you'll come up with 10 um, when you're on recording. Yeah, exactly, when I'll walk out the door. Um, I'm trying to think of the last thing that really, uh, Mershka and I just saw uh, the documentary Three Identical Strangers. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? No. You gotta see it. Okay. Yeah, it's really something, really, really something. Um, and then, and we really want to see Mr. Rogers. Um, we can't wait to see that. Uh, and then there's a beautiful movie that I saw a long time ago called Pele, uh, uh, a Spanish movie called, um, it's called Pele, uh, the Conquistador. Pele, el Conquistador. Um, beautiful movie. Um, and it's funny, I, I actually have a list at home in in my I have a list in my phone of, of favorite movies for for uh, uh, for moments just like this. But I'll wait. I'll, do you really? I'll put yeah. I'll put ten percent of my brain to that, and, and they'll keep trickling in as we talk okay, about so other stuff. Okay, so you can just so, pop on in. Yeah, exactly. No what exactly. We're okay. About. Let's flip to TV. Do you watch TV? Almost never. I had a feeling that's so weird. Almost never. Why? Uh, because I I can't. This sounds. I think this always sounds haughty when I say it, but because uh, I don't have time, Be and that 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 makes it sound like I I think that other people that I'm so busy and other people just have all this time on their hands to watch TV. But the busiest people on the planet find time to watch the shows that they like, and they record them, and they manage it, and they figure that out. Um, and I don't, uh -huh. uh, and so it's a it is absolutely a failure on my part. Um, and so I, I I just barely watch any TV. I did uh -huh. like Happy Days. <laughs> Happy Days, one of my all-time favorites. Like 1870. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I I yeah I I, I don't and don't. I and we try. Mershka and I try, and we watched a little bit of The Crown, but I think that one of the reasons I don't also is I get so invested that I I don't want to be made to uh, wait for the next bit, uh, and then you know you can make the case for whatever binge watching or watching yeah, a season of something yeah. but I don't I, I, I haven't quite mastered that either and then there are just cultural pieces that I know I've missed like The Wire I've never seen The Wire and that's just something that absolutely everybody should see um, or you haven't either or well, from I haven't the face seen that you've The Wire because everybody oh, told right? me to watch it too okay. and I've tried I, I think on two maybe even three occasions to mm -hmm. start watching it I can't get into it yeah. so okay, well, okay. I've said it I mean, people everywhere will disagree with me, but I don't. Yeah. That doesn't feel to me like required watching. Got it. Oh, um, two more movies. Diva. Okay. Beautiful movie, uh, French movie from uh, a thousand years ago, and then um, the, uh, the um, Force Majeure. Oh it's, yeah, the ski movie. Oh. Right. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. I mean. Wow. That was like, you feel oh, that, like viscerally, right? Yeah, like yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and, and as, a, as a parent and as a husband and as a wife, and to, to, to that level of discomfort and that, that, the depth of that look into the, um, in a sense, 
mundane pain of a marriage. Yes. Oh. Translate. He did. He or she. It was a he filmmaker. I feel like. I he remember. and he just made and just did the square. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he the way that he was able to put that into like a simple and put that into a movie where you yeah, yeah. get it without necessarily being like spoon fed. Totally. Right. It, 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 ne- ne- neither spoon fed nor nor was it overwrought no, nor was it nor did he rely on sort of the pyrotechnics of a huge blowout right fight. um I, I just thought it was fantastic same but i feel like that's also like a european filmmaking thing too, sensibility where, yeah. right like they it can be just a slice of like or a day a few days yeah, in yeah. the life of yeah. and it's not like this grand thing going on or yeah. whatever and they just kind of weave in really emotional deep things that you yep. feel when you watch people just be living their lives like regularly. I also think that there's a different I, I think that there's a uh, a different aesthetic, a different uh, uh, a, a different pace and a different willingness to let the camera linger on on yes. things and uh, and and I think that I don't know whether attention spans there are deteriorating more slowly than they are here, Perhaps. but I think that they that the the, the I think that I st- I I'm not an expert in you know neither I think it was, was he Norwegian Swedish I can't remember in or let's say non American yeah. cinema but I think that the 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 frenetic cutting it, it, it is something that is f- from here more than from there and I, I, think and so. I like that uh, I like that aesthetic yeah you feel like you're with real people when you're watching like, I'm feeling yeah. French like a French film like that I don't know like that's the thing I always get when I watch French yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, I'm like yeah, I just yeah. feel it's just like a different <laughs> I think it's a movie with like a different feeling after it's just yeah. bizarre I recommend it for everybody yeah and I watch a lot of TV shows like on Netflix or whatever from other countries but they are different than the movies like there are a lot of good series and since you don't watch TV like I'm probably not going to recommend them to you but I would right I, I, I know that I'm supposed to watch um, Gamora uh, g- g- uh, what, what's the one Berlin Berlin something something um, oh yeah no I haven't watched that one uh, I know what you're talking about uh, I'm gonna look at by the way at the end of this podcast I'm gonna spell out all the things that we couldn't remember so everybody do fantastic I, okay good I, I, everybody good. will no questions will be left okay, unanswered great um, uh, Berlin something or other and so Gamora is Italian it's an action kind of thing love it uh, El Marginal is a Argentinian wow, series. Wow, listen to you. That's excellent. Wow, okay. <laughs> I just love these shows. Berlin Babylon, I think, isn't it? No, it's not called Berlin Babylon. It's maybe it. Babylon something. Uh, now I feel like I, I'm, I'm I think I'm, it is I'm Berlin stuck. Babylon. Is it? Yeah. And I one thing, um, I did watch, I watched the first few episodes of Mozart in the Jungle, and I loved it. So you didn't finish it then? Um, I, I didn't for the same reason that I for this uh, that I that didn't yeah. like, I had no time and, no and time. Uh, yeah no time and but I really liked that. Well, my friend Christy actually recommended that for me like a year ago. She's like, you've got to watch it. It's one of the greatest. That's good. And I watched maybe two or three, but I just get fell off. Okay. I can't keep. I don't know. It okay. just didn't grab me. Wow. And if something doesn't grab me, I don't keep going. Yes. Unless I have to to do my research for an interview. Lesson. What are you like with books? Are you the person like 50 pages in, I don't like it, put it down, or I'm going to go to the end? I'm 50 start. pages, put it down. Oh, is that right? I will. I don't know if it's 50 pages every time, but it also depends on where I am with reading. So it's funny. It's the same for it goes me in, with goes reading waves, now. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. right, it goes in waves. And I feel like there is never time right now for me to open a book, which is the worst because I love reading. And when I'm in the mode of like reading, I have to quickly start the next book and then I'm still loving it, loving, 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 loving. But then when I, there's a little gap and I haven't been reading anything, then it's like, I feel like there's too much going on in my life to pick up a new book. But when you were reading consistently, do you think that was because there was less going on in your life or because the actual physical nature of your brain was different than it is now. Probably both, yeah. Okay. Or what, you got a third thing? No, 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 not a, it's, uh, it's, 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 or not even, not even the, uh, what your brain is like physically, but yeah. just the, the, because your attention span has gotten shorter. I know mine has. I think that is a yeah, sad yeah. Yeah, truth, yeah. actually. Mm-hmm. I do think you're right. Right now, I mean, 
I've had busy moments in my life, and I do remember times where I had more time, and I definitely read more. Mm -hmm. But that was a long time ago, before I had three kids, a journalism career, and a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. So both of those things, but I do think, for sure, no question, we all have shorter times, uh, uh, attention spans right now. Yep. And then maybe not we all, but I think most of us do. Yeah, I think it's really pretty, yes, I think it's fairly. So what's the cause? What's the cause? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you know the cause. I know. I mean, you know, my God, please. Um, <laughs> I, well, my God, what's the cause? Um, the, I think the cause is. It, 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 I'm, I'm curious about what people are going to say. What people are going to lament in 50 years, uh-huh. right? When they say, my God, holograms, they're ruining everything, right? Because it used to be radio, yes. radio was corrupting our youth, and then it was TV was corrupting our youth, and now it's screens, right. and then now uh, the internet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I, uh, so, yes, I think it's the, um, it's the, it's the, the, the gosh darn screens. Yeah, I know, yeah. I think it's awful, I agree. I mean, who doesn't agree, I guess, at this point? Two interesting things. I was watching a little bit on this new, new movie that's coming out. I think it's called Eighth Grade. It's not out yet. I, I thought it was it? out. I, Maybe I saw, it is. I saw, I saw, I flipped flipping through movies and I think that it's out. Yeah. Okay, so Eighth Grade. Oh, the, um, what was the movie? The movie where that followed the boy all through his life. A boy, boyhood? Boyhood. Oh. oh. <gasps> Took me apart. Apart. Took me apart. That may be the greatest movie. R- Richard, Richard Link. Richard Linklater. Linklater. Richard Linklater. Just in terms of, in ter- you know, in terms of a, just a, a cinematic achievement and commitment to something to carry that through. Crazy. Took me apart. Blew me away. Yeah, yeah. I was not expecting because I thought this is a gimmicky movie every yeah, yeah. year they're filming. Like, yeah, yeah. this is going to be so bogus. Not a fan and of then, the idea. Right. And yeah. then when I saw it, uh, but it's like what we were talking about before how it's just this regular. Exactly. Life, yes, yes, yes. And, and, you, and then you feel, or I felt, I, I watched, and parts of it where I, I felt like I was invading. And I, 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 in the same way with force majeure, that you, I, I shouldn't be here. This is something so private. Yes. It would be better if I weren't here. And that is a really remark. That, that I think is an incredible thing. Incredible. And for it to take that long for him to still be able to put it together in that way, I don't know. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Just, but that was that real life kind of thing where yep. I'm in the, I'm in those moments with them, and I, you know, I haven't experienced exactly what they have at all of them. All yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, kills me. Yeah. And I love it. And then there's the other end of the spectrum, um, <laughs> uh, the movie uh, Top Secret. Did not see Top Secret. You did not see Top Secret? What the, is Top Secret? The, the, yeah, the maker from from the, the people who made Airplane. Really? With, with Val Kilmer. Not to be missed. What it is, is this? It's um, 1980. Uh, 80, maybe 86, eight, no, probably 80, 84, 86. Okay, so it was like before Naked Gun, but after Airplane, but same genre? Exactly. Okay. Yes. And uh, a, a World War II espionage madcap thriller. Not. I am so watching that. It, but, I, but, and it's funny because when you meet somebody who, in the same way that, you know, everybody saw Airplane, fewer people saw Top Secret, but when you meet somebody who has met them, you just go back and forth with quoting the, the fantastic uh, lines. Oh, so you thought that I was going to read it yeah, back yeah, and forth? Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry to disappoint you. Oh, no. What a bummer. Um, but it's, Next uh, time, when it's you great. come back to it's for great. a repeat. It is, yeah, exactly. You will have, we're going to go back. We're going to And I will back. have seen Godfather 2 and watched some TV. Okay. So. Perfect. Um, yeah, but, so, this, so that, yeah, you were going to say something. No, you, we just did two digressions. Okay. You, we just took two turns from whatever we were talking about. Screens. Yeah. Screens. Went to boyhood. And I think that, okay, I think that even screens was a digression, but that's all right. Okay. Attention so, spans. Oh, Re- reading. 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 Oh, we just find our way back that's on the right. road. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And so it could be, actually. That's good. So reading, I, I, it is from, probably from... Also, I'm going to tell you with the podcast, I have to do a lot of, there are a lot of little pieces. So like right. I have to get on social media, I have to think about promoting, I have to think about guests, interview, the whole thing, like yeah. interview themselves are like my, you know, the greatest thing ever. Um, but there's other yeah, little, yeah. Yeah, little components and especially like getting the word out and talking to listeners and whatever. So that takes up so much time that I think I find myself now feeling like if I have five minutes free, 
I should quickly go on, jump on social media and like maybe respond to people who are listening or whatever, that kind of thing. And yeah. I want to do that, but at the same time, it's that, that like mindset that there are other things to do that I can get done in five minutes rather than just picking up a book for five minutes. It's yeah, too bad. But yeah, and then I think but picking up a book for five minutes is also tough because when you're deep in, it's like, I think that's. But what about when you're in one of these amazing books? You will take the five minutes anywhere you that, can that, find. That, that's very true. Then you, um, I, I the the and the only book that I ever read walking down the street was uh, Friday Night Lights. The, um, the original Friday Night yes. Lights by H.G. Bissinger, uh -huh. um, which and I remember that that was, was 1990, that was ninety ninety one. Exactly. Um, off and if you have it, it now the movie's out and the TV shows out, and all, but but the original book, and you should read his article in GQ about being having a shopping addiction. Okay, I will totally do. It. I heard him on a podcast once. He was a guest. And what, what was he like? I've never heard him. Um, like, I think he was like very intellectual. Yeah. Um, I don't remember much more than that to tell you the truth. I don't think he was the most um, entertaining, probably. Okay. Because he's a writer. I mean, yeah. that's a terrible thing to say. Why did I need to say that? Not all writers are not not entertaining. Well, I. But well, that's well, not well, okay, we'll we'll say this is that perhaps he uh, he feels more. He didn't necessarily feel. That was not necessarily his strength. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or th didn't feel necessarily too obligated to entertain because that's not his primary. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And everybody shouldn't. Who's on a podcast yeah, feel like they have to entertain? Right, right. That right. is not at all what I meant to say. So I'm gonna I'll let strike. See, see you can you can delete that. I'm not gonna delete it. I'm gonna strike it. Strike the record, strike the record. Okay. afterwards because I want to be honest. Record. Okay. So I do remember. I think I was actually listening to that podcast and thinking to myself. Also, you have to remember, or you not, don't have to remember, but I did not see the movie. Mm -hmm. I tried to watch the, we're talking about Friday Night Lights. Yeah. I tried to watch the TV series. That's another one I couldn't get into, which is weird because the creator of the TV series. Peter Berg, yeah. Yes, Peter Berg. But wait, why am I thinking Jason Kadams? He has something to do with it too because he I was the that. parenthood uh, okay. guy. Okay, maybe parenthood. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, Peter, right. I'm going to tell you something. If you watch TV ever, you need to watch Parenthood. Okay. I'm telling you now, okay. because of Boyhood. Oh, is that I, right? I feel okay. as though it's gonna be my that's going to be your show. Which is going to be a reason not to watch it, because when I start watching, I won't be able to. There are a lot of seasons of it, but one episode gives you like you know 44 Dude. minutes or whatever for okay. that commercials. That's all you need. Mm. So what do you watch? You watch Parenthood? You watch... Well, I don't watch Parenthood watch anymore. More, anymore. That was current. back in the day. Um, right now, I mean, I flip around. depends on what's on. Uh, I watch a lot because this is my it's industry. Your, it's your industry. And it's not just my industry, but I love it. Yeah. Well, I love movies, too. And I love books, too. But uh, I watch a lot of TV. Right now, I'm in the middle of... Oh, I just started The Sinner. Which you want. Oh yeah, the murder on the beach, isn't it? You just gave away the first episode. But it, but I mean, that was yes. but that's in the trailer. Yes. See, I can't. It's too much. Can't do that. Well, I think it's only eight episodes. I know, but no, not too much. I I, I don't want to watch somebody get stabbed. I on. hear that. I Holy feel you. Cow. I, I mean, I watched the track. I watched the the, the 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 trailer. I can't yes. watch the commercial. It's well done. I like it so far. And it hooks. when something hooks me, um, and I don't right. care what the storyline. Okay. Like, it's just, it's like structure, too, in a way. Okay. That it's something about that, that, like, they're telling a story, and they know exactly how to begin it, and, and they know exactly what to do as they're moving along. How far into it are you? Four episodes. And it's great. You know what I also started? I can't remember why, but somebody told me The Affair. Okay. Oh. I'm watching The Affair. Oh. And I have been since it started. Okay. I watched it last night. It's funny you say that. Okay. So it's yeah, so it, stressful. It's so yes. Yeah, the beginning so super stressful. I, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's stressful it's and it's lot. disturbing. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And at times it's weak, to be it's honest. Weak. A weak show. Oh wow, okay. So it's strong there, at, so, at okay. times and at other times it's like, okay, come on with this show, ridiculous. Are there any shows that you have watched that you think aren't weak at some point? Breaking Bad. Ah, uh, okay. Came to be like the masses, okay. but right, absolutely. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. Parenthood. Parenthood, okay. Happy Days. No, Happy Days did get one. That's where Tom the Shark actually that was, was good. created, right? That's exactly right. They're right. So That's exactly did. right. It That's funny. Tom the Shark. Um, That's funny. Okay, let's see. I'm blanking out, but there are so many. Did, are you a Game of Thrones person? Nope. Nope. 
one episode, not even the whole episode. Not even the whole episode, you could do it. I'm also not a like fantasy sci-fi okay. person at all. I was really into Lost when it started, okay. but then that got a little sci-fi. I had this belief, I know you didn't see it, I can tell. <laughs> like, In your eyes right now. Yes, yes, of yes, course. Yes, Lost, Lost. I love that show. Right. Uh, that was like a phenomenon yeah, at, no, no, at I, that I, moment. But the basically at the beginning, these people like a plane crashes, they're on a desert island, you don't, and you don't know nowhere. Yeah. And there's a polar bear running through the jungle. It's like tropical, there's a polar bear. So like I thought for a good season, maybe season and a half, that was there was an explanation for this, that somebody had been there, oh. there are other people on the island, there's something going on. And yet eventually like a smoke monster appears. And I'm out. I'm like, this is totally fancy. Wait, what do you mean a smoke monster appears? And there's a thing of smoke, and they call it the smoke monster because uh -huh. it like represents, I don't know, sci-fi. I can't explain it. Got it. Okay. I can't explain. And it. what was the explanation for the there polar bear? There was really none. Really? Yes, it was sci-fi. But you finished. You didn't finish watching. I did. I watched. I saw it to the end because I felt like I had to. I Find out about the polar bear, didn't you? I did. But that was one <laughs> of the things that people hate about the show. Not hate, yeah, okay. but their complaints. You think people love the show is that they did not explain all those big questions. Wow. How do you explain a polar, polar bear? bear? How do you explain this? And they weren't able to do it. But again, like you were saying at the beginning, like they, it's a creative work of art. They tried their best. They were trying to make something for everyone else. They can't do everything. They can't do everything. Right? He's the, um, he has the- J.J. Abrams? Uh, not J.J. Abrams. Um, one of the producers and one of the writers, God. Um, uh, just, uh, 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 did, uh, now did, he did Jack, um, I think Jack, uh, Jack Ryan or Jack Reacher, da, 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 the Amazon series. With um. Wait, who's who's starring in that? Now? Uh, Kaczynski. Kaczynski, I said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go off on a tangent again. Okay, with Kaczynski. go. So I saw his movie recently. Did you see that? He made it, and he's in it with his wife Emily Blunt. Oh, called um, I know something about silence, silence. Oh yes, the, it's the like a horror, movie. horror movie, yeah. So I really like that movie. I would not be able to. I can't do horror movies. I don't either. Really? I don't like horror movies. Did you see Get Out? I did see Get Out. Did you, did you watch the whole thing? Yeah. Wow. Uh, three minutes. <laughs> Done. You couldn't watch it? No way. Why? It freaked you out? Totally. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, That's just different. flat out fear. I, I will not, I can't metabolize this out. But it didn't seem like horror at first, did it? Get Out? Soon enough. Three minutes. No, okay. Seven minutes. All right. Until, until he goes to the house and the grandmother mother the mother with the tea i mother he has the tea, they sit and the mother gives the look and and something go the screen goes a little swimmy whatever it's 12 minutes in i don't know i'm like bye bye oh okay forget it done i'm out don't see the Krasinski movie. Okay, oh, But I way. liked it, it was so cool. Yeah. Um, for anybody else who's not freaked out by horror movies. I just don't like horror movies, normally. Yeah, I can't, I can't. I saw The Shining way, I saw The Shining when I was, uh, I think 11 or 12. Oh, so that That was just it. a total mistake. Now The Shining is still scary. Some of it, I think is a little bit like dated. I haven't but gone near it since. It'll still freak you out. Oh, good God, yeah. I introduced this to my kids when they were, I don't know, like. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, but they weren't kids' kids. They were, I'm talking about my older kids who were teenagers now. So, like, it was a couple of years ago, so they were already teens at least. Kids, I have something very <laughs> special to show you. Mom has a surprise. <laughs> She's gonna turn out the light and we're all gonna watch a movie together. Actually, you're gonna watch it alone. It's gonna be really great. Um, Wow, that's that's how old, how old were they, and how did they react? They were teenagers. My daughter was in, and my son and was like. And why a would you do? Because that? I like them to be educated on films. Honestly, I did but not think why that's scary. That? You can educate. It's a, a great question. I don't know why that. It's all movies. It's a very. It's what what what. Let it, me redeem what, myself. Go on. Ask no, I, I was just gonna say what what, it, what what criteria do you use for the curation of your child children's film education? A an impactful iconic film from any in genre, what, in whatever genre that you okay. should experience for one reason or another. Got Scary it. or not. Got it. Got it. Okay. Great. But yeah. they had seen like they were already. Hitchcock viewers, but only, yeah, they had probably seen them all at that point. Like, now my younger, who's 10, I won't, I won't give him those films. Although I did, okay, I'm not like a child parent, but I'm telling you, do you, you know every Hitchcock film, right? You've seen all the Hitchcocks? Most of them, yes. All right, I mean, so, all right, I, yes. 
He's not going to watch Psycho yet. Good. He's not going to watch The Birds yet. Good. However, North by Northwest, Northwest. was fine. Okay. And uh, Rear work. Window was also fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yes, 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 yes. Great. At, okay. At 10, I feel like it's a great thing to experience this it's a very slow moving film yeah yeah and you're just following what's going on outside uh uh james stewart's yeah. window so it's like i think it's a nice thing to like build up that suspense and see the suspense that can be in a movie without being in your face I know you're looking at, and you're gonna no, call like the I, I think that, services in it. No, no, no. I, I think that different uh, kids have different tolerances for sure. uh, things like suspense or the possibility that yes, for, for um, yes, yes. Mine was low. Low. Yes. I think yours is lower. Yeah, mine, mine, mine was low, and still is. And I'm just fine with that. <laughs> I can see so, by your reaction. Just to fine. My, just fine. My, my. Uh, you're, you're, it's movie night. <laughs> Ooh, that Kara's house. We're going to freak you out and we're knock you, you out. for three nights. You're going to have to run into our bed in the middle of the night. Dude, they, didn't get, they don't get scared? They didn't get scared after The Shining? No, my son, I do remember, in the middle of it was like, get on out of here. So he left. Okay. But my daughter, who's the oldest, like um, unaffected. was not unaffected, but she's such a film fanatic yeah. that, like, it worked for her. Nice. <laughs> wow. Um... Speaking of which, so when we started to go off on another tangent after books, yes. we were talking about social media yes. and attention span, screen, screen, screen. Yes. So I was just hanging out with my daughter the other day, and we were talking about exactly that. And she's 18 now. She's yeah. off to college in the fall. And she said to me, she was like nostalgic for old movies and when screens were not even a thing. Mm. She was talking about like my generation. She's mm. like, I like all those movies. Here's what prompted it. We were at Universal Studios. Yeah. Have you been there? No. There used to be rides at Universal Studios in Florida. Oh, in Florida. I thought you were also Universal in, yeah. in, in California now. But not that one. Okay. Okay, so Universal Studios in Florida used to have rides like Jaws. Yes. E.T. Hmm. Earthquake, which was just you felt like you were in the middle of an earthquake. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the theme park. Uh, later on... I guess between when I was a kid and when she first went, and now we just went back, and now there are rides like Transformers and Fast and the Furious, and right. the only old school ride is E.T. Now there's like an hour wait for every ride except E.T. E.T. was walking oh. and that's it. So sad. That's so sweet and sad. And my daughter was like so, she's like, this you, is so sad. Did you go on it? Of course, twice. Wow. And guess what? It was my 10 year old's favorite ride that day. Of course. He went to all the Harry Potter rides too, of course. Right, right, right. But his course. favorite was E.T. Old wow. school. And what happens on the, you go on the shopping cart or what? You go on the, well, it's not a shopping cart, Peter. It's a bike. Like I said, the bike. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> my God. I thought it was a shopping cart. But it has a basket on the front, which looks like looks a shopping cart. Looks like a shopping cart. cart. Okay, but I mean, okay. Fair enough. Okay. And that's where E.T. fits. <laughs> that's right. Okay, it's a bike. <laughs> Elliot. But it's a very gentle. That was good. Can you do that again? Elliot. That is good. They are so. Oh my God. So there me, that's one of the greatest movies. And I just had. I just. Um, we, when we just saw. Oh, when we saw The Incredibles too. I ate two bags of Reese's Pieces. So in celebration. So it's all. It's all coming full circle. Thumbs up. And yeah. my daughter ordered. She got Reese's Pieces this, that, night that night because, because we were there, that. and she was nostalgic for like the old time. And I told her. I said this. Things changed a lot, like your generation, and even I guess from the millennial generation, she's younger than like millennials. She's mm -hmm. Gen uh, Z. What is the new one? I think it's Gen Z. Some people call it iGen because of the iPhones oh, and nice. iPads. Okay. Wow. They're the first generation to grow up with, in their adolescence, total iPhones wow. and screens. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what about that? What was he saying about it? I lost my thought. Um, uh, Reese's. Reese's. Uh, oh, gen she's generation l l uh, younger than millennials. Oh, so I'm, right. So I thought. So I'm Gen X, and I said, you know, the thing we were didn't even have computers for a lot of our lives. Yeah. Much less the internet. Yep. And even when the internet came, I feel like it really changed with the iPhone more than just the internet. Mm -hmm. Like I think the iPhone changed everything. No question. Like in a in a good way, and but mostly in a bad way. I think. I still think that if somebody. Even the I, when if you take a step back and you think that we live in a culture where we all carry, right? So we, we carry we carry a box, 
where we can punch in any where we can punch in a code that's coded to another person on the planet and then we can talk to them at will that idea is still utterly mysterious to me the fact and then like if you think if you had to if you were given the chance to travel like back 500 years like 500 they've traveled back in time 500 years what technology would you be able to explain to a degree that somebody could actually replicate it or put someone on track to invent that thing 500 years ago or 100 years ago me none of nothing. it nothing right not nothing. tv not tv not, not phones. a phone a f nothing regular phone right not, not even a, a I, I can barely explain electricity i hear you you know and i and i and not that not that there are you know kind of voids in the time space continuum that you might step into and there's a threat of actually traveling back the hundred years and having to throw down with some technical knowledge not that that's an actual risk but still i'm amazed at how little i can explain yeah i'm so confused by it too honestly totally i still don't get uh, this is a little simpler but i still don't get planes i really don't understand the planes yeah. right i'm not gonna lie yeah yeah I have to have it explained to me. Like, I'll ask my husband or my son to tell me again and again, like, what exactly? How exactly is this? And the fact that they're actually pulled into the air as opposed to, yeah. Right. That it's a vacuum that actually, above the wings, that actually pulls the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What even does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Or sailing is Ships. actually. Ships. I was going to say the same thing. Ships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are ship flow. And, that, and it, it is exacerbated when you have kids because they ask you questions. Like, my son asked me this summer, why don't ships sink? I was and? like, well, there's the volume of air in the water displacing the da da da. And, and, and then comes, but why? But why? And then, and the, uh, yeah, so it, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm, and then I'm drenched with like dad shame. Right. Um, That's when your, your internet gets yeah, coming Exactly. Handy. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. And then, and then of course you Google it and Wikipedia has the, you know, 18 pages on why ships don't sink. Um, and then you try to translate that for a seven year old and you get, yeah, but why? Right. Um, no, it's impossible. Yeah. I don't understand any of it, but the technology, especially like technology the, especially. Uh, Right, when you get to like the, what is the internet even? And how am I watching it? How am I doing this on the phone talking to somebody through the air? Like, through the air. Right. And how, yeah, yeah. How? 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 I don't know. Maybe yeah. somebody else can explain, but it's not me. Yeah. And not you, maybe. No, not me. So, all right. So, three kids you have, right? We do. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what are their ages? Uh, 12, 7, and 7. Okay. So, how's that going? Uh, <laughs> Fantastically That's well. That's a broad question. Um, they, it's going, uh, it's going fantastically well. Um, they are uh, uh, happy and alive and curious and kind. So how's that gap between twelve and seven? That's five years. Five years. So what's the relationship with you? Have a son is your oldest, right? And then yeah. a son and a daughter. They're yeah. both seven. Yes. And you adopted both of them. Both in the same year. Yeah. Okay, so they're not the same. They're not twins. They're not the same birthday. No. Okay, so how is how? What's the dynamic between like your older and your youngers? Um, it it uh, as with as with, uh, I think all kids. The answer to that is like. Depends on the day. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. It, it depends on whether uh, somebody went into somebody's room and took something that they weren't supposed to, or whether things are going swimmingly and they're all playing baseball in the backyard. Um, so, but I, but I think that um, that uh, our, our oldest August is a. So the names are uh, August. Amaya and Andrew, um, three A's, and he is a a really, really good big brother. That's cool. Um, yeah. So you really, lucked out. Well, no, you really lucked, lucked out, out, but you obviously had something to do with it. I'm not going to not give you credit I, for that. I, I, listen, I think it's it's um, the the kids are usually <laughs> more in spite of the parents than because of. What do you so, think? Like, what's uh, your nature nurture take? Um, I don't. It's interesting. Watch, watch, uh, watch, three identical strangers. That's an interesting uh, issues about nature nurture. Um, but uh, I don't think that there's a hard and I don't think that there's a hard and fast rule. I uh -huh. think that um, um, I, I think that the, in terms of parenting advice, I think the the best advice that I got was. Um, uh, first give them roots and then give them wings um which i love that's mm -hmm. simple that's um, very give them roots and give them wings nice. um and and i so who gave you that advice my older sister 
my old sister, I told her I was nervous about uh, having kids. And she said, you know, and, and, and yeah, and, and I, I thought that was, just keep that, keep that in mind. I like that. And uh, you know, when you plant a tree, the first thing that it does, supposedly, for, for five years is go underground horizontal and then it goes up. So it can, it makes sure it can stand and then it grows. And I think that's always a good metaphor for uh, raising kids is make sure they can stand and do what you can uh, and then, and then let them, and then let them grow. Um, and I, I also think that um, it's interesting because I didn't, I didn't grow up here. I grew up in Germany. Um, and I think the, the view of the child in this country uh, is interesting compared to other countries. Uh, and to, to experience that, to experience that with my own kids. And I think that we live in a, we live in an extremely individualistic society, I think, here. Um, and I think that very often we can tend to uh, treat our kids as projects, individual projects. Um, and I don't necessarily know that that's the best thing for a kid. Um, and I don't necessarily know that we treat them as, uh, as, uh, as, as, as fully, in a sense, yes, fully formed, competent humans. And we treat them often as defective adults. Um, and I, and, and they are, you know, if a child has an opinion, if a child says, I don't like this, right? Then they are, um, that is, that is an entirely, uh, formed opinion, that child experiences their opinion as deeply as I experience mine. It's a difference of opinion, as opposed to your opinion of that is defective because you're a child and I as the adult have grand knowledge uh, that, that I can put on you in order to render your opinion of that thing uh, uh, invalid and that's that that is uh, and, and but listen and I'm not at all the parent who then says like hey yes absolutely if you don't like it you'll have to eat it I mean, my, that, that's the, that's not it at all but uh, but it's not um, it's it's not I, I think that it's very easy I think that we very easily um, we underestimate mm -hmm. Maybe discount the, the power the 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 power differential between parents and kids. How overwhelmingly powerful we are um, and what a, uh, what, what, an, what an incredibly delicate thing it is to actually um, get under, just get underneath a kid um, as opposed to stand over a kid and say, here are uh, here is this image, this expectation of what I plan for you to be. Let's see if you can meet that. There's that versus I'm going to get underneath you, support you, um, and, and let's see who you want to be. And that's, you know, and then the, I, I, I always, I always immediately counter my, my own statements and, and I say, you know, that's, I sound so loosey goosey. That, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying like, oh, yes, you can go off the rails and go anywhere. It's not that. But I think the, um, just that, 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 um, uh, I, 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 I yeah, no, saying, I know what you're you saying. You know, it's just, the, it's, 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 it's the same you, thing. Yeah, it's how you started it with, they're not our projects that we have to turn them into something. Yeah. That in our, in like an idea that we have about yeah. who they should be or where they should be. Yeah. They are who they are. They are. Let's help them stay grounded as they find that. Yeah. Right, and help them find that, but not in, not in a way that's going to be like a problem to society. Right, right. <laughs> there's there's um, the, uh, the writer, uh, David Solomon? David Solomon, who wrote um, who wrote the, a book called the Noonday the Noonday Demon about uh, that was about depression, and then he wrote uh, a book called God, David Solomon. I think it's David Solomon. Richard, no, I think it's David, um, uh, and called uh, now a book. Uh, and the second book was called, or not, or the subsequent book was uh, called Far from the Tree, uh, and it is about essentially our relationships. It's it's about uh, parents relationships with uh, 
I don't, I don't want to say not the, the non-traditional is not the right word, but uh, with children who fall outside of the norm, what is it like to parent a child? What is it like to be the parent of a child um, who is uh, who has a mental illness, who um, who is uh, engages in criminal behavior, who uh, parents who are you know hearing parents with deaf children, deaf parents with hearing children, and uh, it's it's a uh, it's an examination of the parent-child relationship. I I confess to not. I will say I confess to not reading the whole thing. Um, so you know, full disclosure. Since we're being honest, absolutely <laughs> okay. honest about everything. Yes. Um, and uh, but in the beginning, he all the way in the beginning of the book, he says he said such a great thing. He said the arrogance of the word to uh, to reproduce. Right. To okay. reproduce. That's absolutely not what we are doing. We're not right. reproducing. We're not making more of us. Uh, we are engaging in, there's a, ah, God, I can't remember the, I, I think it's, I think it's Khalil uh, Gibran, Gibran, um, who wrote The Prophet. I think that it, it was either him or somebody else or, or, or Rumi or, um, I mean, that's through, out of two different times, but uh, who, who said the children are life's way of making more of itself. Life, I love, okay. yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah. Um, and I and I uh, and and so he. The, the, I love that the, the arrogance of that of that phrase to reproduce. Like I'm going to make another one of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not that. It, it is. It is. You uh, really get to uh, be a part of um, of uh, you know bringing a, a life, yeah, the an, in, in, of life an, an individual into the world. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, I so that, was, that, that. was that was a, you asked me how's it going with your kids? Yeah, but, and off I go. But that's, that's this is exactly how it's going with your kids because this is what you yeah, think well, about, right? Yeah, yeah. So you you're a, you are a philosophizer, sort of like you like to think about all these things too as you're going, or do they just come to you later? Like, are you? I think that you know, in in the. the it mostly day to day it's like where's your permission slip and why are these two different sneakers and why'd you draw on the wall um and and then uh and that's when their opinion about why they drew on the wall doesn't matter at all because you're the dad and you said don't draw on the wall um so uh right, i'm giving you wings but not to do this right exactly. yes exactly don't don't i'm gonna clip them um the uh and then I think in, in quiet moments and during podcasts, then I then I sound like there's some sort of a coherent plan. Yeah, or yeah. Vision. Well, I think sometimes you kind of need that, right, to step back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. hard, I think, day to day. Like, right, sometimes there are those moments like we were talking about where you just know, like, this is good, like that everything's where it should be. Totally. And then and then and then yeah, and then then sometimes there are just no wheels on the car yeah. at all. At all. At all. And you're like, okay, I'm like, there are certain days I'm like, I am a couple. If I I am a complete failure yeah, in yeah. life and there's also the 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 tyranny of the i don't know two or three parents who do things impeccably <sighs> you know and the way that and and i think that i i also find it tricky that he, here uh, in, uh, let's say in this country. I, don't even, I mean, I know New York. I can't say in this country, but just generally, uh, like I, I think that like other parent in, in I think in Europe, which I know uh, in one place, the one other place that I know well, I feel like it, other parents feel like they have the right. It's culturally, societally accepted that that we raise our kids as a society right community as a community mm -hmm. um and that's not always ideal that's the it means that people are up in up in your grill a little bit more about things but there's a positive aspect to that because i think that kids also have a sense that they are uh that they are responsible to a greater good there's a little bit more of a sense of that probably ask lots and lots of parents and people in germany and spain and france whatever say that's not the case anymore there at all but i think that just uh generally there is more of a coherent net for 
they, that that kids sort of feel responsible to, or uh, than here where there it, it's simply all about the individual. Yeah, it's all. I agree completely. You know? I think probably you're right that the parents there would say that it's not like that anymore. But at the same time, like, I think anytime you're over there, you can see you can just that it's different. See. It's, still. Just, it's just different. Yeah, I, I feel like one of my regrets, honestly, in life is I always wanted. I kind of wanted to be an expat when my kids mm-hmm, were growing mm-hmm, up, mm-hmm. and I wanted them to grow up there. Yeah, we talk about that. We're just kind of talking about yeah, that. did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I really did. I felt like there's no, I feel like there was no reason. I mean, I just really did want to do it. Yep. And I kept thinking, well, maybe soon, maybe soon. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like, it's too late. Can't do it now. And I wish I had that. It's, I think that that, that, uh, that it's too late happens so quickly. Be, and the, the only remedy, I think, in a sense, is to look 10 years down the road uh-huh. and then look back at this moment. And, and you will say, you will look at this moment and you say, my God, I, I had all the time in the world. I, I just, I remember when I, when I first graduated from college and I, there were, I, 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 I had endless ideas and plans and this and oh, I should do this and, I, and then I, have, I taught, I was a teacher for two years and then I finished doing that and I was like, oh, I should blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these different ideas and then I thought, but I don't have any time. My God, I'm already, I'm already 23. You know, and I look That's back crazy, and I'm like, oh yes. my God, Peter, so much, so much time. time. It's preposterous, so right? Yeah, yeah. See, I never felt like that. I was always one to, starting from when I had like a job as a teenager, if I didn't like it, I was out of there. I'm like, really? this, yeah, I don't need to do this. I want to do something else. And I had so many interests, so it was like easy to find something else. But even like career wise, I finished college, I graduated with this, with just like you, you became a teacher. Yeah. Well, I had an accounting degree. And oh, wow. then I decided to go back to school and get a master's in psychology because I wanted to be a therapist. So did I did you that. Really? Yeah. I oh, did no that. kidding. <laughs> Were you a therapist? Yes. No kidding. Totally. Was wow. A therapist. What kind? Just like a psychotherapist. We sat down and talked just kind of like this, but we would dig a little deeper and like I try to help you figure things out. Wow. Yeah. But That's you would be a good. You're going to you, bill me at the end well, of this. You, you would be a good candidate because you're a thinker. Wow. Right, right. So, but I did that again. I'm like, for I don't long? like that. So, I was a therapist for a long time. I'm gonna say like 15 years or something. No kidding. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So I was did the therapy for a long time, and then I started here. writing here. Yeah, in New York. Wow. I'm a licensed therapist in the state of New York. No kidding. Yes. So now that that's been divulged, but yeah. Is that in your? If if I had done my homework and researched you a little bit, is that in your bio and things? And probably I- it's there. It's not like prominent. But okay. it is the kind of thing where I have mentioned it on certain shows, and some people I often get like a response like, "Oh, now I get it. Now I understand why this interview is like right. this instead of like all the other interviews that I've done." Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and you know, people have said they should, you know, they'll how much do they do it? They owe me that kind of thing. So I have said it on certain, but I so don't. So your joke's not original. But, no, but I don't flaunt yeah, it. Yeah, is what yeah. I'm saying. So, um, but yeah, I guess if you did your full research. You might have seen them as a therapist. And what, what I was going to say, the broad question, uh, what was that like? So I loved it. Yeah. Because like what we're doing now, love it. Yeah. I love talking to people, but like one-on-one and really getting into interesting, like in-depth things, yes. topics. And yes. So that is for me, no question about it. So when I, I got my master's at Columbia and then I, I went right into it, started private practice like almost right away. And I was into it, but then I wanted to, I want, you want the whole story? I, yeah. I wanted to write a self-help book because oh, wow. they were okay. really popular at the time. Got it. And I would see them and I'd be like, oh, I could do this in my sleep. I'm yeah, going to write yeah, a self-help yeah, yeah. book. But I couldn't, I wrote a, did a whole book proposal and everything, sent it to literary agents mm-hmm. who came back to me and said, we like the idea, but you have no platform. You've never been published before. Mm-hmm. We need, you know, and we're not going to publish somebody who's unpublished. Right. Which of course is like, well, well okay. Right, I'm published. Then how right, are you exactly. published? So I started writing for magazines got and it. then I got into it and I was still a therapist and I started interviewing like actors and famous people. What you start writing? Do you, okay, so that's what you started. So I didn't start with that. I started with parenting. R- so okay. I write, wrote parenting articles and I okay. talked to experts and I used my, some of my own therapy skills and I write parenting things. Got it. And then I kind of got bored with that, to tell you the truth. Huh. And my kids were very little at the time. Right. So I was like, okay, I kind of need to do something else. And then I just wanted to do general uh, health, wellness, whatever. And then somehow it went into like, Actors, and then I realized I've always been fascinated by movies and TV. Huh. So it was like a way of combining 
both. So I started right. doing interviews. Got it. Profiles, that sort of thing. And so I still do some for magazines. I write for the New York Times. I do like Sunday routine. I don't know if you've ever read that. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I still do a little bit of writing, but mostly now it's a podcast. So this... I'm giving, this is like a long, whose interview is this? How did you do this? You are the first person to have done this successfully. Is that right? Congratulations. Really? That's yes, not true. Yes, you're interviewing me. No kidding. Yes. Welcome to the... Peter <laughs> Herman Show. Welcome to the Peter Herman Show. Um, Today my guest is... Um, I, how did you come up with, uh, with Really Famous? The name, which I think is such a fantastic name. Because Why? you Because... You absolutely have to say yes to an invitation from a podcast that's called Really Famous. It, it, you, I mean, it's like, wow, well, of course, my God. Because you, you either get to think that you are or there's the promise that you will be. So it's fantastic. Awesome. It's great. I love that. How did you, you come up with it? Because it's the essence of what I do. So famous people. Yeah. But I'm interested in who they really the, are. Oh. Right? Wow, that's really good. Wow, that's really good. Huh. Um, I, one thing that I didn't notice as you, as we talked, is that you, you don't interject that often. You are, inter you're interesting conversationally. Because you, and now that I, and now I know why you, you, you listen very well, right? And I think that, that and, and so, and I, and, and many interviewers that that's the job to listen. I think that there's a different quality to the way, to the therapeutic model of listening. And I think that cannot help but flavor the way that you do this, uh, and, and part of it may be for technical reasons that it's not good to talk over, but podcasts are conversation, people talk over each other all the time. So I, but I, so I did, I, did uh, I, 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 I noticed that, and it's interesting that, that you have that, that story. That is interesting. What, um, and what was the first jump into actors? So that's a good question, and I really have to think about it. Because you just said it's, it just sort of happened. I do feel like it just sort of happened. It's so funny. I don't know if I can place the first one that I did. Um, maybe it was Sunday Routine for the Times. Like, uh, who did I interview at the beginning? Jim Gaffigan was was uh, one of my first. Edie Falco. Oh, no, but that was before. So I wrote for the Wall Street Journal as well. And I did profiles for them. But I feel like I might have already known that I wanted to do that or was doing it before. I don't remember who... Hmm. Or how, but the, I do know that I was the one who actively started pitching stories about celebrities, mm, mm, mm. actors, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I was interested in it. Like I would be watching whatever I was watching at the time, Nurse Jackie or something. I'd be like, oh, I should interview Edie mm. Falco. I'd love to know who she really is. Mm, so mm, I mm. pitched her to the Wall Street Journal, mm. New York Times. I did her both, but never mind that. So I don't know who the first one was, though. That is a great question. Like, can I cannot answer yet. Uh, I have to think about it. And what was your take? What was your take on the self-help book? So if, if if that book had been published, you want to know what it was? Yeah, and I would pick it up. Who who am okay. I? Who who am I that buys that book? Okay, so you are anyone, but this is probably like 15 years ago. I say it could even be like could it be 20 years? No, no, I can't be long. But I think probably 15 years ago you are because it was probably a product of the, its time as well. Okay, it had a title. It was called Life Snaps. So mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a quick solution for anything in life, which is the opposite really of therapy when you think about it. Because therapy is yes, all about like digging on. deep, yes. figuring out, like, finding the real answers to like the big things that have been yes. like kind of hindering you all along. Yes. But this was like the opposite because I felt like everybody's looking for these like digestible, easy solutions to things. So I was gonna organize it by like an alphabetic, it was gonna be an alphabetically organized book wow. of problems. And I was going to give a solution to them. Not deep issues, obviously. I even had light ones. I had to write a sample chapter. Right. I even had light ones like uh, one of them was how to get rid of hiccups, but it was using a psychological uh, strategy that I had been taught in psych class. What was one of the heavier ones? Because I mentioned Noonday Demon. Is it that you get to D and it said depression? And he, 
support? No, it would not be no. something like that. Okay. I would not pretend that I could help depression right. in a book like that. Okay. So it would probably be something like, I can't shake this bad mood. Got it. So that wasn't one of the examples. Maybe it was. That's the only one I can remember, actually, is hiccups. It's not funny. No kidding. <laughs> I don't remember. I could pull it out of my old file cabinet and like see exactly what I was, what, what other problems I had solutions for. But right now, I don't remember them. It is, it is essentially like you prefigured the app that you then flip through, and you have the hiccups right now. Do you? No. No. Do you think oh, I, I thought you did. Right now? I thought you did. No. Um, the, I'm not sure why I thought, we thought I did, but um, I better change whatever I'm doing. I um I, so it's like an app that you flip through. Yeah. Yep. But it's in a, in book form you, before you the phone. Search now. You, said search, you search now. I said alphabetically. You just search. Just say like um. Uh, bad mood or right, exactly. like fighting with spouse, something yes. like that. And then boom, I've had, it's called Life Snaps, it was, because I'd have a snappy little direction for you. And probably the direction, one of the directions might be like, you know, talk to a therapist at yeah, this yeah. point or whatever. That was it. Do you miss therapy? Do you miss doing it? Um, or does Not this, really, or does because it? this has replaced it in such a satisfying way for me. Wow. So I remember having such an impact on certain people, like not me, I was able to help, it was them, yeah, yeah, believe yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was them. And if they weren't ready to do the work, they weren't gonna go anywhere. But if I was able to help them do the work, the feeling that I had was amazing. Yeah. And then when I would see them doing these wonderful changes for themselves in their lives, but at the same time, there were people who didn't do right. the work and it was frustrating. I This is now the No 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 but but I'm not, if, I'm wild. <laughs> you are so good at this. You're saying I am you're good at this. I and what what was the hardest I, I I was going to ask what was the hardest part what's the hardest part of being a therapist? Um you know there's the Janet Malcolm book the the impossible profession. Mm -hmm. Um and I I, I would I'm curious about what you thought, think the hardest part was, and it was already in part in your answer yeah. to uh, to be sitting with someone. And do you then have the feeling to the degree that you're able to say this honestly, like, oh my God, why don't you just, if you would. Yes. Yes. I'm wow. gonna be totally honest, because that's my way. Wow. Because I would like, the, all the tools, it's sometimes you may feel like this with your kids, even sometimes like they'll, you want to help them so badly, but like yeah, I'm yeah. giving you so many tools, so why can't you just, you know, do this, help yourself in this way, whatever. Um, I said it to my son the other day, like my 15 year old, I was like, just like uh, bring it back to movies again. Um, what was it, the Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr., Tom Cruise movie, Help Me Help You. You know what I'm talking about? That he was an agent, sports agent. Oh, oh, oh uh, uh, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire, exactly. So I'm like, help me help you. Like, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. That's the hardest part about being a therapist. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you came to me, which is amazing, and I want to help you. And it wasn't that. Sometimes certain techniques don't work for certain people, so you have to kind of like re try different things. Yes. And that's fine. That's not the problem. The problem is when you can tell that they have put, they're putting their. They're firmly planting yep. their feet and they don't want to go there. They don't want to do it. And then do, do you then say, I don't think this is working. I think we need to terminate this therapeutic relationship. Or do you wait for them to, uh, I never like using this expression, but peter out. Um, you know, do you say, <laughs> I always take offense at like, peter out, wait a second. It's wrong. Um, that, I love that but, you used to know. But, but to, to, to the relationship to simply, to, to, to for them to come to that conclusion? Uh, that's a good question. So I would never be the one to quickly say, this isn't going I'm sorry, anywhere. this is working for me. Right. And I kind of felt like a bad therapist in that way because I think that they would have taught me in grad school that that's really the best way to do it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but there are different philosophies. So it's not hard and fast rule that like that's what you have to do. Right. But I always felt like I wanted to, not only to keep on trying myself, but... I also didn't want to ever like abandon anybody. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even if they got something out of coming to see me, it would frustrate me a little bit that I wouldn't see that much progress, but I would bring it up to them. Like I would try different ways for them to see it, but often those people didn't want to see it. You know what I'm saying? So if I would try to say, okay, so I feel like you know, maybe you don't feel like going here, or maybe you, know, you want to, but you're having trouble with it or whatever, I would see how it would go, but right. some people will go there with me, but if they're not going to, they're not going to. And that would be my point where I would suggest, you know, do you think that you should still, we should still be doing this? Is this helping you? If so, how? And that's how I would mm -hmm. move it along. Mm -hmm. But that was hard too. That's super hard. Super hard. 
the, um, the, uh, and did you feel ready once you started coming out of grad school and you sit there for the first time with somebody in your office at your private practice? Or are you sitting there going, oh my God. Well, I wasn't in private practice at first. I okay. started my private practice on the side, but I was working for a, like an agency. It was a, a substance abuse agency. Okay. And they hired me to work with not only the substance abuse, but like the loved ones of the of people who were using. Got it. Or um, just people came in with, um, regular issues that they need to work out and that became my specialty there okay. so but I do remember like I do remember a couple of my first sessions being a little nervous but it very quickly dissipated it because this is, it feels right to me wow. um, but I also do remember being called out on my age by a few older people oh is that right yes because they thought you were so young and yes they were like what do you know these were like you know drug abusing wow. alcoholics right, right, right. for years and years yeah. and then this like young 23 year old or whatever Upstart who's, right yeah, yeah. comes in and like is trying to tell them how to live their lives how do you answer oh, gosh so long ago oh, I have to flip it on them is my age bothering you does something about my age bother you and then so that not turn it on them but right. turn it around so observe, I could see something uh, from they right, could observe, talk right. about it yeah. so it was an open forum for them to talk about whatever was bothering them about my age and also maybe to learn something else about what they're bringing to the table. <laughs> you, I'm going to get you a show. What? I'm going to give you your own podcast. Okay, fantastic. We'll talk. But, but it's interesting. But, it, but it's, it's, it's fascinating. And, and, it's, and it's fascinating to, to, uh, to talk to somebody who, is, who has left that profession. Uh-huh. Right? And who, who can look back on it and say, this is what it was like. This is... Uh, this is what, what was difficult about it. Yeah, and I don't know that therapists are that open to revealing what it's like to be from the, on the other side. Right. So I don't think that's tip. Like, I think it's maybe a little atypical to like yes. get answers kind of about yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're sort of taught in school to be like very private. Yeah. And not not give anything up personal away. Yes. In the in the therapeutic relationship. Right. So, because of the whole I mean, yeah. the old old school the idea yeah. of you know transference and you're sort of blank slate exactly. you know, and all that all that good stuff so yeah exactly yeah. my oh my but that was one of the hard parts for me too i have to be honest that i felt like when i was doing therapy that i really had to be this person that wasn't as natural like as i am now so as the podcast right. got it I you can could just be you and be me hmm. which feels authentic more authentic to me rather than that felt like i was almost playing a role yeah do do you feel that during the have there been times in your, have, have, when you interview, and this is a quite interesting, it interests me about journalism in general, about when you are, when you sit, sit across from someone who, by whom you are morally outraged, how you can, how you can interview somebody like that. And I, uh, and, and when you know that you're being lied to, how you handle that as a journalist. I'm always curious how people do that. Okay. You know, how, you know, people in the current administration included being interviewed by any given, uh, you know, talk show host and not forthcoming with answers, how, what that is like right. for that person. I can't speak to that because right. I never did that kind of journalism. Right, like, right, I right. never yeah, interviewed yeah. politicians and yeah. I would never want to for that reason. For that, because it's I think. Like, because. I can't like because you need to be you and exactly and you, right, right, right. And like this not a, this isn't a political podcast, but certainly many of my guests have brought up political things. Yeah, and it's fine. Yep. And I usually just kind of let them say what they want to say, say, and then decide afterwards how much can go in or how much not. Yeah, yeah. like I might if they really, really go on and on and on. I might cut a little bit of it just so it's not overwhelming. I'm not a journalist, so I don't have to represent like the equal sides. Yep. I mean, I am a journalist, but for the podcast, I'm not. So I didn't feel like I had to be a journalist in that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what do you Man, think? No, no, no I, I, a very um, interesting, interesting path. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting path. But the reason we got on this was because I was telling you that I never, I always felt the way you did, which is you have time, I'm not the way you always did, but I always felt like I had time to make changes or whatever. I yeah. did not want to be that person who 50 years down the road said, why did I waste why my did? life yeah, yeah. That's what I didn't like. Yeah. So when I felt like I was done with something, I switched over. Mm -hmm. So I started writing because I wanted to do that, not because I wanted to get out of therapy, but I started liking the writing so much yeah. that the therapy just kind of fell to the side. Yeah. 
And then I started the podcast because, you know, publishing, the yep. whole, you know, newspapers and magazines are done. Uh, yeah. They're done. Yeah, they're done. Okay. I mean, not the publishing industry that we have on Younger. Right. No, I, mean, no, I think that the, that the, the epitaph for the publishing industry has been written many times. Yes. And I, but I think that print media, that's another, that, that's another story. Yes. Yeah. I think and that's, I, for me, for because, it's, because it's advertising based. And so, yes. Exactly. Okay. And things were shifting. So it took a while. Like when all the, all the word on the street was, oh, it's dying, it's dying. I was still doing fine. There were plenty of jobs coming in. I was a freelancer. Yeah. But then at a certain point, things did start to dry up and like the money started getting, I would make a fraction of what I would yeah. used to make to write the same exact thing. One more question about yeah. the therapy. Yes, please. Uh, and then I and then and I I I used to be a fact checker at Vanity Fair. That's so right. For, 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 for two years, right. so the, the world of magazines. But do you find it sometimes uh, that there's I, don't, I won't say I won't say conflict, but do you sometimes find that you know that you feel like you know the you you a conflict between approaching your kids psychologically in terms of a uh, that you that you know more about them because of psychological constructs and development that you studied then you can let on in the moment or does it all just organically inform who you are as a mom I think it organically informs me as a mom however okay. certain times I will find myself even like whether or not maybe I'm talking about it to my husband or I mean, I even said it to my son Griffin the other day. I was like, he's, you know, he's, he's a teenager. Right. And there was something, he's like, mom, you just don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I do understand right. because I have training in this. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so awesome. And yet he still does not so, think I know what I'm talking and about. so infuriating to a 15 year old. <laughs> Holy cow. Can you imagine? I mean, when I, when I, if, if I said right now, to somebody you don't understand and that person said to me I do understand because I have training in this I, I would go through the roof or the worst thing when parents say to kids I think it's just because you're tired oh, that's that is that. the worst that's the worst it is so patronizing because imagine like it looks now like Peter needs to know oh my god if somebody said to me right now if I was angry or this or that you know what? I think it's just because you're tired and that is as infuriating to kids as it is to but we do it all the time. Oh, drives me bananas. No, you're right. You're right. And it right. probably was the worst thing for me to say to him. It was except I was like really um, grasping at straws at this point. I'm like, I'm trying everything and you, for some reason, you are being so close-minded yes. right now and so insistent that you know what you're talking about. I know that you are wrong. That the, and the only, the, the only recourse is I know more about you right now than you know about you, right? Which is... <laughs> So infuriating, right. <laughs> but, 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 but but it's 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 like as a last resort. That's what we're the, yeah we say right. That, but yeah, backing that. out of it, and to be fair to myself, yes. I wasn't analyzing him in particular. Right. I was talking about people. People, I know. Okay, yes. Uh, so I wasn't saying like you are acting this way because you are blah blah blah. I didn't say that. Got it right. was uh, like how to re how people relate to each other. Oh great! And so then like I take on the role of a fifteen year old, and he goes, okay, so I'm just people. I'm just everybody. <laughs> I'm not me. I'm people. Great, exactly. great mom. Now you realize it's the greatest, right. greatest response to him that I've ever come up with in the moment. Very but nice. That, it does. It, it colors everything I do. Yeah. And I don't think I don't do it intentionally. Of course. It's just who of I course. am. It's just who you are. At this point. And it's you know just I, I've always sort of analyzed things, life, myself, people, yeah. relationships. Yeah. So like I'm gonna, it's gonna color everything I do anyway. Was it in your family? Were there therapists? No. No. Uh, my dad was a school social worker. Okay. And so my dad and I actually have a lot of things in common too. So he okay. also writes articles freelance right now. Okay. But I think maybe that, but I come from a family of educators, of teachers, like you were. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Everybody's, my sister's a teacher, my mom was, oh, God. my wow. dad. Wow. So that's my background. I initially went into college thinking I was going to go into TV and film production. Couldn't get the right classes because I, really? for some reason, couldn't get all the prereqs. I was too like low on the totem pole, with freshman or whatever, trying oh. to get the classes of sophomore. So then suddenly I was like, I better find something else. And all my friends were going to the business, so I decided, all right, I'll just grab accounting. So what was the interest initially in film and TV? Since that is now just what's loved TV growing up. Happy Days, come on. Okay. 
You know, you mentioned it. Okay. It's the third time we're talking about Happy Days now. Okay. I Happy know, wow. Days. By the way, I met Marion Ross. Did and you I really? interviewed uh, Don Most. Wow. Mouth, so. And um, and Henry never. Never, but we were supposed to. We, he was coming to New York recently to promote his new show for HBO. Yeah. And we were trying, I was setting it up with the publicist, but then, I don't know, our schedule's just mismatched or something, so I didn't ever get to interview him. But I think I will. Harold and Maude, another great movie. Oh, Harold and Maude. Beautiful. I don't think I ever saw with, That's with, what's his name? Um, with, uh, she, she, with, with, with Ruth Gordon. Um, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Uh, I, I, I know. Right. Who's in that movie also? Arthur? No. Is no, that different? No, no, no. no. I'm totally um, uh, No, it's um, uh, 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 Dudley, um, oh, Dudley Moore, yeah. Dudley Moore. Yeah, no. he was Arthur. Yeah, he was Arthur, yeah. which is also one of the you know, right, greatest right. movies ever. Um, uh, but he, and Tootsie. Oh, but no, you're saying he wasn't. Um, oh, Tootsie, Tootsie one, of the best. one of the greatest ever. Um, but I don't think, I don't think, no, no, Ruth Gordon is, uh, it's the relationship between the very young man and, and the An much, much, much older world. Yeah. I, I didn't know. My God. I'm, I, I can all There's this beautiful scene where he get. I think they go to a, a carnival together and he get and he finds he gets a coin. And then I think it's or, or he buys something for her and she um, and then they're by the water on a dock and she looks at it and she <laughs> tosses it in the water. And he's like, what are you doing? I just gave that to you, and she goes, "Now I'll always know where it is," which I love. Oh. Yeah. And I and I saw her in a, in a store in Boston once, and I was so starstruck, and I didn't know what to say. So. What did you do? Did no, you walk past nothing. Her? Nothing. I walked past eight times, and she was like, "Why are you being weird? Just say something." She, I mean, she couldn't have cared less, but she it, and she was incredible. She was and just, she, you know. Oh yeah, I was like, I should have said hi. You know so. who I did that to? Ray Liotta bar. Really? I walked right past him recently. It was a Tribeca Film Festival. I was leaving a screening, and he was leaving a screening, and there were no people around him. You know how like actors have people all yeah, around yeah, them at yeah, all yeah. times? And he was just... And he was just walking, kind of like wandering himself or whatever, and I'm so embarrassed. I asked him if I could take a picture of him. Duh. Who? who why? Oh, yeah. And like, not with me, not a picture of both just, of us, just a picture of him. Of him. And I think he was like a little weirded out, like, wait, you don't want to do it with you why you do it. <laughs> With the picture. But then as I was leaving, I was like, why didn't I ask him to be on the podcast? Why didn't I invite him to be on the show? I don't know why, but I regret it to this day. It was only a few months ago. Did you think of it in the moment and decide not to, or it didn't occur to you? I think I thought of it the second that I, that I left. But I can't assure you that that's what happened. Huh. Because I was totally starstruck. Interesting. Regrets. <laughs> Well, it's star, being starstruck and doo-doo. Well, it'll be a great story to tell him when he's on the podcast. Oh, I love that. It'll be great. That is a good spin. It'll, 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 it'll be good. All right, so let's do this. Yes. Well, I could talk here forever with you. I know you have things to do. Unless you don't. Unless you just, <laughs> just keep, keep going. Because um, I think we can find a million topics. Let's make sure we talk about younger. Okay. What let's time make is sure it? It's 1.30. Do you have a hard stop? What time do we start? Like 12.05. Because I gotta go. Okay. Yeah, like big time. Big time? Yeah, like but totally big time. Okay, shoot. I didn't ask you about younger. All okay. right. All oh right. my god, wow. Yeah, I have to um I have to be down in Soho in half an hour. Okay, I have a ton to tell you right now. First of all, you may notice we didn't get to the topic of younger or talk about Marishka. So guess what happened? Peter came back for another interview. That's right, he came back maybe a week later and we talked about a lot more. Don't worry, we do go deep analyzing Younger, plus we talk about life as a famous couple, Marishka's work in Law & Order SVU, getting published, being a fact checker at Vanity Fair, and so much more. Part two is available now. Just scroll back through my podcast feed and look for Peter Herman, part two. And later, Peter interviewed me. Yes, that's right. As a bonus episode, I am the guest and Peter is the interviewer. There's a Peter Herman part three. It's called the Kara Mayer Robinson interview by Peter Herman. If you want to hear that, scroll through the feed. Also, just a few facts. The show that he was mentioning that we were talking about, it's Babylon Berlin. And when we were talking about J.J. Abrams, 
it was Carlton Cuse. Also, it's John Krasinski, not Kaczynski, and it's Jack Reacher. And John Krasinski's recent horror movie is called A Quiet Place. In fact, a sequel is on the way. If you'd like to check out those films that Peter mentioned, I put up a list of his favorite films, or partial list at least, on reallyfamouspodcast.com. There's also a link in the show notes. Definitely check out my YouTube channel. It's at youtube.com slash reallyfamous for that exclusive video clip with Peter answering extra questions. Spoiler alert, it will make you laugh. Head on over now to youtube.com slash reallyfamous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson. Thanks for listening. <laughs>